Okay, so hi, I'm Nadine Barbazan, and I work for BC Wheelchair Basketball Society. I'm the program manager, and I'm with Marnie Abbott-Peter, who is the director of Let's Play, as well as works with BC Wheelchair Basketball um, for our coaching. Marnie, a bit of a new role. What else are you? Right. So um, I've been in a few different roles with the basketball, wheelchair basketball society over the years. Um, I started out as a player and then a coach and worked as a provincial coach and the high performance director. And now I'm focused on the little kids and doing the Let's Play program. And I'm sort of circling back this year to do some of the high performance stuff as well. So I've been in lots of different capacities with the organization over the last 25 years. Yeah. And since September or even this time last year, it's changed a bit because of COVID. So you know, we're always moving around. So just a bit, we're going to do a bit of an intro about wheelchair basketball and then get into some more um, organization specific information. So wheelchair basketball was, uh, it kind of came around in the sort of the 70s, late 60s um, in the US. Some of the veterans from the Vietnam War um, got together and created the game and started playing and it just kind of grew and expanded from there. And now it's one of the um, most sought after Paralympic sports to watch and play, I guess. But basically um, anybody can play wheelchair basketball if you have the upper body strength. So we focus mainly on people with physical disabilities uh, so that people have a good um, cognitive um, function in terms of decision making and those kinds of things. Um, people with spinal cord injuries, uh, we have quads that play wheelchair basketball, spina bifida, CP, polio, amputees, um, people with reduced mobility, so we call them minimal disabilities, so it might be someone that you see walking um, down the sidewalk that you would never think would play wheelchair basketball, but they can no longer run and jump, um, so they do try the sport and find it quite challenging and interesting. And then we invite people without disabilities to come and participate. So people who are fully able-bodied can come and hop in a chair. We have a classification system to make sure that they're not taking a spot away from someone with a disability. Um, and yeah, we have a lot of people playing in our clubs and in our women's league, um, right up to our national championship level, uh, who don't have disabilities, who just enjoy the sport of wheelchair basketball. So basically, um, yeah, we invite anybody to try it. We have all kinds of different levels, whether you're just starting or coming down more of a high performance pathway. We have programs, um, in which Nadine will talk about later, sort of for all the different levels and anybody who's playing. So the basic rules of the game, if you know about basketball, uh, then it was pretty easy to learn about wheelchair basketball. The rules are pretty much the same. We follow the FIBA rules, which is the Federation of International Basketball, which is what the stand-up players who play internationally um, use. There's no double dribble in wheelchair basketball, so you could stop and start as many times as you want, but the rule is you're allowed to push twice on your wheels, and then you have to dribble, pass, or shoot, or that's considered traveling, which the equivalent in the stand-up game would just be picking up the ball and running down the court. You can't do that, so it's the same in wheelchair basketball. There's requirements on movement. So you can push twice and turns count as pushes um, and then you um, carry on. We also do, we use the same size court, 10 foot basket, three point line, free throw line, all of those lines are in the same place. Um, and we have what's called the classification system where each athlete gets classified according to their abilities. So it's a functional system. Um, so you would be watched playing the sport and then you would give an, given a classification between 1.0 and 4.5. So the 1.0s would be um, the people who have less function. So like myself, don't have any abdominal or lower back muscles. So I don't have the same balance or the same ability to push. Um, whereas a 4.5 would be um, an able-bodied athlete or a minimal disability athlete or even an amputee would fit into that classification. Um, so you're basically competing with someone, like if you were all trying to make a team, for example, you're basically competing with someone within your class and your same disability for a spot on that team. And then at any given time, the coach is allowed to put a certain number of points on the floor. So for example, in international play, we use a 14 point system. So we might have two 4.5s, a class three and two class ones. In our domestic leagues, we allow for a little bit more able-bodied competition. So I think our points are at like 17 right now. So you could play with maybe three point five, point, three, 4.5s and a couple of people with disabilities. 
in our BC game system, we have a different rule. So it depends on the level as to how we adjust the classification system domestically um, in order to allow the maximum number of people to participate in play. So some of the programs that we offer um, through BC Wheelchair Basketball uh, Society is our schools and community participation program. So essentially that is we bring a fleet of sports wheelchairs out to uh, elementary or high school or different community groups and show people how to play wheelchair basketball. Um, usually it's about 10 sports chairs. Uh, there's a coach involved or we bring some athletes out and everyone can hop in a chair and try the game. There's usually a couple skills and drills and then we get into a fun game. We have for the schools program, there's a cost to that program. Um, and, but right now during COVID it is on pause just because we're not allowed to go into different community and school groups. So for more information, that can just be found on our website. Um, we have our junior programs, camps, and tournaments. So through our junior program, right now we're offering virtual programming, which I'll talk about later. But we have different events throughout the year to focus specifically on our juniors, and that's around the province. We have our um, junior challenge, which is our annual basketball event for our juniors, which we bring everyone in from across the province, usually to the lower mainland, to have a couple days of skills, drills, and some competition. We have a rec league, which is our all comers festival that we try and do every year in the beginning of the season to invite anybody and everybody who wants to come out and play um, just to try the sport to then hopefully join a program or just have some fun. That is done through our Bridging the Gap program. And our Bridging the Gap program is a beginner opportunity for wheelchair basketball to be shown to individuals who are new to the sport. So whether that's in the rehab setting or in a community that we've never had a program before. So we bring out all of our equipment and we invite everyone to come and it's free and we provide everything and people can come out and play. And then from there, we can give them opportunities to go into local communities to play on their teams or help them set that up. And with the Bridging the Gap program, we offer a wheelchair loan program that is $10 a month or $100 a year to loan a wheelchair. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more of that in the next bit. Um, so we also have weekly regional programming across the province. So there's 12 clubs across BC, specifically in the lower mainland. We have um, weekly programming out of Richmond and Langley, um, sometimes in Vancouver, as well as Chilliwack. Abbotsford, Surrey, to name a few. There's a few more, but again, all of this is just on hold at the moment because of COVID. So we've moved to some online stuff, which I'll explain. Um, we also have our Let's Play program. So that's the program Marnie is the director of and I work with, and we target kids 14 years and under, and we provide the uh, sports chair to that child um, with a physical disability so that they can go into their school or community and be active. We have about 120 kids with individual chairs across the province and then a couple different community groups that have sports chairs. Marnie, did you wanna add anything about Let's Play? Um, well, we just, we just wanna, with Let's Play, we're really focusing on getting kids active when they're young. It's not so much about basketball, it's more about learning the skill of wheeling and developing physical literacy and um, giving kids confidence and a few skills um, that they can participate in PE at school, that they might be able to take part in some kind of local community programming, or even just to do something recreationally with their families. So we don't, uh, we don't expect all of our kids in the Let's Play program to become wheelchair basketball stars, um, but we definitely connect them, even with organizations such as yours, with BC Moss, with the paddling and you know, the, the um, hike, hiking programs and the, the sailing, like we've referred a lot of our kids to different service providers, uh, just to, to whatever their family's interested in and just to help connect them to possibilities for them and just open their eyes a little bit to what's available and how to keep their kids and their family active and healthy. All about physical literacy with Let's Play, yeah. um, the main goal. Um, so moving on, we have our uh, BC uh, Wheelchair Basketball League. It's our provincial league. That is, we have about seven teams across BC where we get together between four and five tournaments a year and have a finals. And at the tournaments, we try and offer a junior opportunity or a come and try it event with our BTG crew. Um, again, this is on hold because of COVID, but hopefully starting up in September or in around that time, it might look different in the coming years, but 
usually it's a fun weekend in a different region in the province that we have lots of opportunities for people to play. You have to be on a team to play in this league. Um, so if you have any questions about that, we can get you in touch with the local group. And then we have our high performance programs. And under this, Let's Play BC Games are not high performance. However, this is um, leading up to our high performance programs. We have our long-term athlete development pathway, which starts at the, uh, Let's Play, which is our active start and fundamental skills. And once you've moved on from those skills, you can go into our BC Games program, which is through the BC Games Society and um, a super fun opportunity every two years where we bring kids into diff from different zones to wherever BC Games is being held. The last one was in 2020 in Fort St. John in February, right before everything shut down with COVID, which was a great timing for us, but um, BC Games. So we had eight, uh, six teams represented from across the province playing a fast paced fun tournament. And hopefully we'll be in Vernon 2022 with the um, same kind of pool of athletes for BC Games. From there, you move on to the Canada Winter, Canada Winter Games um, program, which is every four years. And from there, on to provincial teams and so on, wherever you'd like to go. So some athletes just hang out in the Let's Play Fundamentals crew and do rec for life or recreation programs for the rest of their sports careers. Or they come into BC Games and that's kind of where they, they finish off at. But there's lots of opportunities for people up to the high performance level. Yeah, and the thing, let me just add, Nadine, with BC Games is is that particular event is a big multi-sport event. So it has an opening ceremonies. There's kids from other sports there. A lot of time it's the first tournament where kids are leaving home and going to stay overnight somewhere else without their parents for a couple of days. So it's really fostering independence and helping them work on some of those life skills too outside of basketball. And so it's a really... Um, it's a big transition and it's a big step for a lot of our athletes, but it, it really is a unique and really fantastic experience. And lots of times we have brothers and sisters and cousins and family members that participate and play and help fill up the teams and the zones. And it's just a super fun event. We, we use it to develop our coaches and our officials as well. So it's been a really important part of our, our long-term athlete development model for many years. And some of the athletes that you know, BC Games is their highest level of competition that they do compete at. They come back and coach the younger kids at BC Games, um, which is also a great opportunity, like Marnie said, for coach development. And if it's your first time coaching, we have um, adapted rules to our sport. So it's four on four. Um, there's just less technical and more focused on the experience and the gameplay for um the juniors that are there and coaches as well. There's lots of support. We bring in mentor coaches and um, mentor athletes as well. Um, so we also do officials and coaching development. So we train coaches who are interested to start coaching at the BC Games because we always need coaches at BC Games and then moving on to other programs if they're interested. Um, and we'll do, we can do clinics or different weekend events to help support that. Do you want to add anything, Marnie? I oh, know that was great. Okay. So how to get involved again, COVID aside, we have lots of opportunities. It's just been a different um, past year. So you can refer a family for family or family member or friend to any of our events, because like Marnie said, we have an able, able bodied people can play the sport and we just want everyone to come out to any event if they're interested in trying the sport. Um, and we have weekly programming throughout the province. You can try it yourself at any of our have a goes that we offer through Bridging the Gap program. Um, we have a jamboree that is every year, which is just a fun tournament you register for, you show up, we mix teams up and just have a fun weekend playing diff with different teams and different people. Um, and it's it's just an opportunity to have fun and learn how to play the game or just enjoy yourself aside from the competition. Um, and then we have tournaments and events throughout the year that there's opportunities to come and watch, come and try, or just uh, come and volunteer. So right now with COVID, we've been doing virtual programming since April of 2020. We've done weekly programming um, for all, you, te technically for 18 years and younger. We've been focusing on that age group. So our juniors, and right now we have Mondays from 4.30 to 5.30 on Zoom, which we can provide some more information, which it's just a multi-sport opportunity for kids. On Zoom, we um, provide a sports equipment, little camp kit, which includes 
things like a TheraBand, a basketball, um, tennis items, tennis balls, lacrosse balls, um, ropeless jump ropes, anything that we can come up with that we can do through a screen and just get people's heart rates up and, and active and moving. We bring in special guests. We've had adaptive boxing and a whole bunch of strength and conditioning, uh, professionals and, and uh, personal trainers and that kind of thing. We've danced. We have just have fun. So if there's someone that is interested in our junior uh, virtual programming, just get in touch with us. And something else that we've been focusing on is monthly we've been doing a girls only program or go time. And that's with BC Wheelchair Sports Association as well as the junior programming as well. And we just bring girls together to have some social time as well as get active and fun. And that's that's monthly. And we started that program a couple of years ago just because there are statistically less women or girls playing sports. And it's just another opportunity to have a group together to um, have fun and t talk openly. We bring in mentors that have played sports and have different careers and and um, yeah, Marnie, do you have anything to add about Go Time? I just think it's a really important program for us because we don't have a lot of teenage girls um, involved. And so just creating a safe um, environment for girls to come into and to, um, and right now with the virtual part of it, it's actually quite easy because there's very low stress in terms of being involved. Um, so, and yeah, like Nadine said, we, they, you know, been doing making lava lamps and energy balls and shakes and different things like that so it focuses on like a whole variety of things not just on sport and I think it's great just a great um, environment for girls to to get involved if they haven't been involved or to mentor other young girls or just to be in a group where they feel comfortable and safe absolutely yeah we our last go time we had someone who's previously paid, played wheelchair basketball isn't currently in school becoming a pharmacist and they came on and just explained their experience about, you know, being a student with a disability at UBC. So how they commuted to school, how they got around, and just the general experience. And it helped some of the younger girls who are graduating from high school or entering into college for the first year. So it was a really, it's things like that that we bring together, which has been super helpful and ease some stresses of the younger kids who are growing up and thinking where they're going to go and what they're going to do. Um, and something else that we have is our junior sport camp, which is a multi-sport camp in August. That's with BC Wheelchair Sports as well. Typically it's in person and we bring all the kids in with minimal fees to come together in the lower mainland and try all the adaptive sports over three to five days, depending on where we, we are. Um, that ended up being virtual last year, but the virtual experience is great. It's not as good as in person, but we still are making it work and providing um, equipment to those who register and have fun guests and, 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 and make the most of it. But hopefully we can get back in person soon. And that's just something that it brings everyone together and their friends see each other for the sometimes once a year who are at these, these camps. And um, yeah, it's a great, a great time for our juniors. Um, some other opportunities are to volunteer. So any of the programs that we mentioned, we always are needing volunteers, whether that's in the Lower Mainland or across BC, we can help connect people. Right now, we are not having any volunteers in person because we are not doing any in-person programming. However, we're always willing to chat about volunteer opportunities that are upcoming. Um, so please just reach out. The different clubs across BC, we have uh, 12 and we have t uh, clubs on the island. We have clubs in the north out of Prince George um, and hope, like Fort St. John and a couple others there and any different city in the lower mainland. We have quite a few there. So Langley, Abbotsford, Chilliwack, just to name a few. And these clubs vary from just having fun and getting together weekly to practice or they have a team in our provincial league. <clears throat> and so fundraising, we host an annual fundraiser called Hoopest that is bringing together corporate teams or a bunch, we have firefighters in the VPD and um, the YVR has put in some teams before 
and we bring them out for an evening of just fun wheelchair basketball. We pair them up with some coaches that we've had or past athletes so that they can share their knowledge with these individual groups who sometimes have never played the sport before. And it's just a fun evening of um, fundraising and playing wheelchair basketball. And that's usually in May of every year. Um, at the Richmond Oval, we've done that for the past couple of years. Um, we've had to postpone it this past year and this upcoming year. So it should be technically next week. <laughs> so it's not going to happen. But yeah, we um, because of not being able to do it um, in person, we've moved to an online fundraiser called Culinary Layup. And that is in partnership with Fable Restaurant. And it's an online cooking opportunity. You pay for the food and, and part of it is a donation to our organization. And then the chef of Fable Restaurant out of Vancouver sh shared and teaches you how to um, prepare a meal. And it's we've done two of those and potentially we'll be doing more in the future. So those are our fundraising opportunities. And here is our contact information. Um, we are on Facebook and Instagram, as well as we have a brand new website up and running um, for anyone that is interested. Um, and yeah, we're just going to share a video or two um, before we open it up for some questions. So just bear with me. One second. Sorry, I should have had this prepared. We're gonna we're gonna watch Megan, one of our Let's Play uh, junior athletes, who has. Can you see this? Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is um, an introduction to Megan, who is one of our athletes who started as Let's Play and is now in our Canada Games uh, pool of athletes. So we'll let her speak. And this is um, a video from one of the culinary layup um, fundraisers. So just if it's confusing in the beginning, it, that's the reason. Well, I hope you enjoyed cooking that course and it tastes as good as it looked with Trevor teaching you. Many of you out there tonight, I know are parents and I know how much you love seeing your kids active, happy and playing sport. Whether it be with their friends at school, in the community or just playing in a playground with you. A young kid was given a sports wheelchair from our Let's Play program so that she could be physically active with her friends. I'd like to introduce you to Megan Smith, who's gonna tell you her story. My name is Megan Smith, and I am from Vancouver, British Columbia. I've been playing wheelchair basketball for about nine and a half years now. So I have spinal muscular atrophy, lower extremity dominant. I was diagnosed with this at the age of four at Children's Hospital. Having this disability shaped my life to the better. It taught me how to fight for what I wanted, fight against people who thought I should just sit down and do nothing and fight against what I love. It also taught me that being in a chair does not d identify who you are. It's who your personality is that identifies who I am today. I started playing basketball when I was five years old I started through Sunny Hill at this one day try any sport you would like and one of the sports was wheelchair basketball. I met Nadine through this. She brought me into basketball and that is how I started. I remember going with my dad, heading there, thinking in my head, do I really want to do this or do I want to chicken out and just pretend I'm sick? I remember going there and then seeing my old elementary teacher and realizing no I need to do this to prove to everyone that being in a chair and like anything you can do is possible. I remember being super duper anxious. I remember being like sweaty everywhere and freaking out to my coach being like okay maybe I should just sit on the sidelines. Maybe I should just not do anything and pretend I'm not there. But then in the end I played and had a good time. I think my proudest moment Megan is just seeing her on that ball field with that smile and just unbelievable. When I found out that she was actually one of the team players, Megan came home and said, I made the team booyah! <laughs> and I was just so proud of her. The coach did say that their mission was 
to be inclusive of everyone regardless of who you are and what you are and being on the sideline watching Megan in games has just been phenomenal. I mean all the games that I've attended have just been amazing. My proudest moment of my dad was I think when I got accepted to go to U25 camp um, the first person I turned to was my dad and I just was like so like had no words and he just was like I'm just so like you deserve this like you fought your way through everything being on the guys team being here and it was just great to see my dad being there for me through everything. I am looking forward to making the 2024 Paralympic Games and to just keep teaching people basketball and helping out with the Let's Play Kids to just show little kids that this sport is going to bring happiness and excitement to everyone's life. Thank you to the event sponsors and partners for supporting BC Wheelchair Basketball. So that's just one story of many stories we have of kids and people who, adults who are newly injured, who have gotten involved in the sport. And I mean, we like to tell stories because it's, it's fun and it's kind of cool. And it's neat that we are able to help some of these kids kind of grow up through sport and teach them some other skills that are really helpful life skills as well, not just sports skills. So don't know if anybody has any questions, but we're happy to answer any questions anybody has. And our contact info is on that slide there. So be feel free to contact us. And we have a weekly new, uh, newsletter that you could sign up for. We also have um, a big presence on social media, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So um, we promote all of our programs and um, things that are going on through there. And yeah, we just try and keep in touch with our partners and it's been great with the network with the Disability Foundation and SCIBC and the different groups that we're involved in. We really try to um, either connect our members uh, with those other groups if they're looking for something else or definitely we use those groups to help us promote our programs as well. So we're, we're really well connected. We all work out of the same building when we're actually working not from home. Um, and so it's nice to have that connection and to be able to work with a variety of different groups to, in order to help promote our sport and to help give opportunities to people around the province. So Angie, I don't know if you have any questions for us, but we're happy to chat. That's amazing. And awesome. Have you tried any sport or rec opportunities, Angie? Uh, no, I haven't. Not yet? Not yet. Yeah. And where are you located? No, Burnaby. Oh, okay. Nice. So the Lower Mainland. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're happy to share opportunities when they, when they happen in person. Um, yeah. Did you have any questions for us? Not really. Um, okay. I have one. Where oh, okay. are some of the venues where these sports are happening in the Lower Mainland? So we do a lot out of the Richmond Oval, which is in Richmond. Um, that is where we have a weekly program. We were doing a women's only program. And then when we have tournaments, whether that be uh, just our provincial league or we've had national uh, tournaments, international events, um, we do it out of Richmond. Another location is the um, Trinity Western University. We do a lot of things, camps and tournaments out of there. We try and move around, but go for it, Marnie. I was just gonna say, we have some community programming too. So in Surrey and Chilliwack, um, we work a lot with a lot of the post-secondary um, um, facilities and try, like there's a drop-in program at UBC. Uh, we have clubs in Victoria and Prince George and Kelowna. They're all connected with um, UBC or with UVic. And we, so we're able to offer different levels and diff different types of programming, depending on which community it is and what the people there require. So, and the Let's Play program is province-wide. So we probably, 
I would say we probably have about 80 kids right now around the province that have their own sports chairs. So they're able to participate in PE and in some local programming in their own communities. One of the things that we found is that it's difficult for people with disabilities to access programming in their own communities. If they live outside the lower mainland, it's not sometimes that easy to participate. So we really trying to encourage and we're really working with communities uh, we're working with Maple Ridge right now to hopefully get something going out there. Um, so communities that don't necessarily that we don't necessarily normally work with, we're really trying to build up, um, like Salmon Arm, for example, and the North Shushwap. And I know our we have a coach in the north who's been all over the north and Terrace and Prince Rupert and all over up there, trying to really just promote programming and just let people know what's going on and how to access equipment and stuff. So. Yeah, it's been interesting with the Zoom stuff and it's been hard on some of our clubs. I think um, we do have a program that runs in Langley that's mainly focused um, sort of our teenage Canada Games crew. A lot of them live in the Fraser Valley. So that's at Tim's Community Centre. Yeah, so it just depends on what area of the province you are in terms of what's available and how, um, how to kind of access or get connected to one of our clubs. But in the Lower Mainland, every day of the week almost there is an opportunity but just in different cities and through either a club of ours or a community center okay Was that, did you have any other questions <laughs> uh no i did not okay. we went very quick during for our presentation we didn't expect to take only only 25 minutes but um yeah. yeah, thanks very much for having us. We always appreciate any opportunity we have to share our information and our, and about our sport and we love our sport and our and our members. So you have a question, Angie? How do you play basketball in the wheelchair? <laughs> I can show a quick video and then maybe if you if you have any specific questions after you can let us know. It's about two minutes. So let me just share that. And that was something that we were gonna do and then um decided not to but here let's share this this is the paralympic level so very high fast pace but um you know what i didn't press down hold on there we go let's play this wheelchair basketball has featured in every games since its introduction in 1960 the sport is very similar to able-bodied basketball the court, the hoop, and the backboard are all the same dimensions. Each team consists of 12 players, with five on court at any one time. Players are classified on a point system from 1 to 4.5. The higher the number, the lower the impairment. Each team can't exceed a total of 14 points on the court at any time. Players must not travel with the ball and are required to throw or bounce it after every two pushes on their wheels. Like the able-bodied version, free throws resulting from a foul score one point. Field goals within the three-point line score two points. And for all baskets scored outside, three points are awarded. Fouls occur when a player or their wheelchair comes into contact with an opponent. Each game consists of four periods of ten minutes. Extra periods of five minutes are played if scores are tied at the end of regular time. Players use lightweight, easy to maneuver wheelchairs. The chair is comprised of one or two small wheels at the front, two large wheels at the back, set outward at a slant to ensure balance and stability. Players are strapped into the chair, so any slight movement will see the wheelchair react with you to achieve maximum agility. This is a fast paced and frenetic sport requiring eye-hand coordination and stamina. Now I know. <laughs> Does that help a little bit? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, that's a fun video to share that we've been including in our presentation just because it kind of says it all, right? Because we can yeah. say it to you, but seeing it is a bit better. Totally yeah. awesome, guys. Yeah. Marnie's husband was actually in those, um, one, a few of those clips, wasn't he? Yeah, he played in 2012. The men's team won gold in 2012 in London, so it was very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's it. If there's no more questions, um, please feel free to reach out on Instagram, Facebook, or just our info at bcwbs.ca website or email. 
Yeah. We're here. We're here. <laughs> <laughs>